Hello guys, Winston here. If you've listened to my podcast, specifically episode 7 with Edward Ford, you'll know that I've been obsessed with work holding. After visiting IMTS last month, my eyes were open to the myriad of ways that stock can be secured to a CNC bed. In particular, I was drawn to one style of clamp that I first saw showcased in a Titans of CNC Academy video, Mighty Bites Pitbull Clamps. These were used in a custom fixture to securely grip a large diameter round of titanium. These clamps were low profile and mechanically elegant. The principle is simple, the clamp pivots on the back corner and the action of being drawn down by a bolt causes the nose to push forward and pull down. With enough force, the clamp will actually bite into the stock and provide a positive hold on the material. These things will grip just about anything and they don't need to come down from above the part so say goodbye to your extra long bolts and sketchy clamping setups. And so, after seeing them in person, I was sold on the concept, but I wanted a more low-tech implementation that I could DIY. My thought was that I could cut some small aluminum tabs that would pivot against a hard stop. I could add some additional features to permit them to pivot freely and a small nose that I could also use these as regular clamps, albeit very short ones. At the very least, they would work better than fender washers. One of my design constraints for this project was that I had to use 3 inch thick stock. I had some coaster blanks from an old project that were QA fails from the water jet and I wanted to put that scrap material to good use. I skipped the notebook for this and went straight into fusion. I already knew the profile I wanted. A rectangular body and a single slot down the middle that was ever so slightly oversized to allow quarter inch hardware some wiggle room. I also needed at least 3 eighths of an inch on all sides for a washer to fit within the clamp's footprint so I made this thing 0.8 inches wide. Now, cutting aluminum on a Shapeoko, or any other hobby machine for that matter, is about getting your cutting parameters just right. I always start my non-wood recipes by looking at chip load. At 10,000 RPM, I'm targeting 1 thou per tooth, plus or minus a small margin as I see fit. For non-micro machining purposes, which I consider to be any project that uses an end mill larger than a sixteenth of an inch, you don't want to cut smaller than half a thou per tooth. So that means my feed rates for this will be between 10 to 20 inches per minute. To clear the slot in my model, I'm going to use an adaptive clear. This toolpath is your best friend in aluminum. I'm using an optimal load of 40% of the cutter diameter and a step down that's pretty close to the same. To clean up the inner profile of the slot, I'll do a contour with a few step downs and then a full depth of cut spring pass. To fully cut out my clamp, I'll be running a regular contour toolpath. This is my least favorite operation because you have full frontal engagement of your cutter and zero clearance on your side so rubbing and chip recutting are big risks. The depth of cut here is 9 thou. You can definitely round up to 10 or go higher if you're diligent about keeping your cut free of chips and maybe have a WD-40 drip. I'd personally rather go easier on the machine here and reduce my anxiety levels. I'll note that I'm using triangular tabs so that my end mill is never having to plunge straight down into fresh material like what might happen at the end of a square tab. Time to export and head to the garage. I have here a 3.5 inch square of 6061 T6 aluminum on my Shapeoko, and one of Carbide 3D's zirconium nitride coated 8th inch end mills for aluminum loaded up. I'll pre-drip a little tap magic where I'll be adaptive pocketing and kick things off. This is my first run, so there are bound to be some small issues. I wasn't piercing the onion skin at the bottom of my plate stock so I re-zeroed a few thou lower and re-ran the toolpath. I also found that I was getting periodic chatter that would gouge my parts and it took me a while to work out all the gremlins. First issue was stock movement. These oops clamps from Suck It Dust Boot are super convenient and work great clamping wood or plastic, but when the cutting forces increase, plastic on metal just doesn't give you the amount of friction or holding strength that you need. You can actually see the stock jump and shift over in a couple instances. I switched over to some chunkier aluminum clamps that JPL Richard gave me. These aren't nearly as good looking, but they are super strong. Issue 2 was chip recutting. Whenever you cut deep slots, you need to keep your path free of chips. Sawdust doesn't really matter, but having extra aluminum chips in your way can clog your cutter or interfere with the cutting action of your end mill. I ended up using some compressed air to periodically blast my cut grooves clean. With a larger air tank, I would actually want to keep the air blast on at all times, which has some thermal benefits as well, and will let you cut faster. In the end, I felt like I'd worked out a relatively consistent process for machining these pieces, and I ended up with 16 of them. Now, you could use these as is, but I wanted to bevel the back face and also put a small lip on the front. This way, if you want to hold a part with it, you don't need the entirety of the clamp resting above the top surface. You can't really clamp much with these guys, but the design is easy enough to scale up. That back bevel doesn't need to be precise, I could do that on a belt sander. Likewise, the little nose on the clamp can be machined with a flat end mill if you don't care about reducing stress concentrations, or adding a ball end mill into the mix will get you your desired radius. 
but I wanted to try something different for my own educational purposes. A lot of people look at a 5-axis machine and immediately think about how you can use it to make one complex part. But in reality, for a simple object, you can actually make multiples of those in one setup with a tombstone. That means less time spent setting up, more time machining. By using a pocket NC to do all the secondary machining on my rough cut rectangular clamps, I could make whatever profile I wanted without having to flip or align anything. I can put that bevel on the back face, round the edges, get a small nose at the front, blend that into a round, and also clean up the outer profile of the body, all with one tool and one setup. Starting from some 1 inch round stock, I machined a profile that would fit the slot I'd machined on my Shape Oko, and also a hole that I could tap for quarter 20. With some sections of my poor man's tombstone relieved to allow clearance for an end mill, I was ready to clean up some clamps. All I needed to do was bolt on some clamp bodies, hit run, and repeat. And there you have it, a handful of clamps ready to go. These clamps need to go into a custom fixture plate that's tapped or fitted with a threaded insert and have a hard stop on the back so that the clamp can pivot forward. Here I'm gripping a block of wood that would have been too tall to clamp easily. The entirety of the top face is exposed if you need to face it off and it holds way better than double sided tape or cam action clamps. As a proof of concept, these work really well and you can see that I'm moving the machine before I move the stock if I push on it. But there is plenty of room for improvement. First and foremost, I need to adjust this test fixture so that my clamps are closer to level. Your mechanical advantage improves the flatter you can get your clamps. That's basic statics and trigonometry. Getting these clamps closer to level is also important because bolt heads don't like loads that aren't purely axial. You significantly shorten their life if the clamping surfaces aren't within a couple degrees of each other. This is why spherical or leveling washers are a thing. Also, hex bolts are terrible for this application because the corner hits the washer or clamp unevenly and you can't always get a spanner around the heads. Cap screws would be more ideal, I just don't have enough on hand for this demonstration. To allow a screw to sit flatter, you can optionally counterbore a hole at an offset angle. This is what the Mighty Bytes Pitbull does and on a 5-axis machine it's a really easy setup. But since this is aluminum and aluminum is relatively soft, I can't just make a perfectly sized counterbore for a screw head. I would also have to include a washer in there, and that would weaken this clamp too much. I'd want to start from thicker stock if I were doing that. Also, these clamps hold well in materials that are softer than the clamp itself, so wood, plastic, great. But to hold a big honkin' piece of aluminum like Vince Fab does, you'd want steel clamps, maybe 4140 or 303 stainless. Not my cup of tea, but it's been done on these machines before. I'll keep playing around with this concept, but I just want to share a little more experimentation in aluminum to show you guys that it doesn't need to be super scary. Some methodical planning, solid work holding, and a good recipe will make it almost routine. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back soon with more CNC-related content.